Ok. No. Ok, so I'm Galder González, I'm from the Basque Wikimedia User Group, and I'm going to present something called 10 things Basque have done in the last five years. Um, the title is a review of our education initiatives because we have done more things than this. So I have like two minutes for each of the ideas. Let's see if uh, it works so we have some time for question and answers. Okay, so first things, first thing first, get funds. And this is quite important. Um, you can do a lot of things without funds. You can do a lot of things without money. And you can do a lot of things with only volunteers. But if you want to try something nationwide with lots of uh, people involved and full time, I mean, I have to eat. So it's important to have some funds to to pay for staff. So we get the funding from the culture department of the bus government, not from the education department, because the culture department has a section for language promotion. So that's what we get the funds, not from the education itself. Also with some funds from the Basque language institution in Navarre, that is a, another part of the Basque country. We have get some funds from education material innovation funds. There are some kind of funds in many countries to make like new things in education, like new pedagogical items or these kind of things. I don't know if in every country, but I mean, it's, it's something that it exists. And we also, for some project, we have an Erasmus Plus fund that is given by the European Union. So that's where our funds came to do everything we are doing. Okay. The second thing we made when we started with this project was building a list and adapt metrics. This is quite, quite important for us. Um, which areas do you want to work on? If you want to work on everything, you are not going to do any, well, you are going to do things, but it's quite difficult to add metrics. Um, we have a rationale on working on education topics, like topics that will be interesting for secondary students. So we made a list of 2,000 articles for secondary students, like 2,000 items that secondary students would need uh, to be right in, in Basque language, in Wikipedia. And we also are working with the list of 1,000 and 10,000 articles every Wikipedia should have because there are like important topics. And we also make some collaboration sprints like topic related article list and like other topics that are not covered by, by our previous lists. Um, we change metrics according to our list. This is important because when a government gives you money, they expect something like how many articles did you write? So how many articles did you write is a nonsense uh, sentence for us because I could actually write two million articles about insects, like a, with a bot, but that is not a real encyclopedia. I mean, that's a well, it's an insect encyclopedia, but it's, it's not a it's not what it's proposed to do. So we have a lot of work with them, making them conscious that what you, they were paying for was not number of articles, but number of collaborations, number of bytes added, and number of visits added to these articles. Um, we have been measuring articles according to size and quality over time. We, miss, we, need, uh, we measure quality using ORES, that is a system that can be used um, in Wikipedia. Like um, We evaluate like 600 articles and it gives automatic uh, evaluation of the overall quality of the article. Like, it's not real quality. I mean, the article could be nonsense, but um, it gives you an idea of how the articles evolution, articles evolution. So, in five years, you can have like, okay, we are making better articles. They are better covered by ORES. They have more. They have larger size. Normally, not larger is not always better. I mean, sometimes shorter is better, but um, normally, this is the kind of things we are measuring. So we control the narrative. We control, I mean, we promised we are going to do something that we can measure and uh, present as a success. Okay, the second thing we made, the third thing we made after having a list, 
was um, testing an infrastructure, like having an idea on how to work on that. So that we designed a couple of pilot tests and work it on every detail on there. Um, we changed whenever we, we changed from that pilot test before going to a large scale. Um, you need something here that is a kamikaze. You need someone, this kind of teachers that is, a, okay, I'm going to do anything. Then you test with them and you see, it, mu it must be, you have, you need a confident relation with them to, to know if it's working, what is not working, how the students are. Uh, test it with, with, the, with the project. So we, you can go l wider or larger, being sure that the project is not a nonsense. Um, you have to learn your script. I mean, I have explained the same thing like 350 times in the last five years. So it's always the same joke and it's always the same, the same thing what you are saying. And it's important like to test it like, okay, I can say this in 40 minutes, this in one hour, and if they ask me for a two hours uh, class or something, I will say these things. So not to improvise and, and know what, what things work and what not. And you have to write learning materials for this infrastructure, like having brochures, having help pages, and these kind of things. So knocking doors. This is quite important because first we started with an up-down approach. I mean, we made an agreement with the university director who went to every faculty director and every faculty director uh, agreed with this and they made like, a, okay, we are going to, me to make a, a presentation to whoever comes and then you explain them the project and then you will get teachers involved. And this kind of works, but it's not the best approach. Uh, we have seen that door-to-door -door approach is better. Find teachers that will teach exactly what you are, what you need in your in your list. I mean, we want to write about biology because we have problems there. Okay, then we have to know which biology departments departments there are, which are the teachers, what are they teaching, knock doors, and try to try to convince them. We also learned that it's important to try to avoid saturation of programs for the same students. I mean, okay, we need more per, more more articles or better articles in biology, but if I knock the doors of 20 biology teachers and 10 of them saying, okay, or well, 10 is very optimistic, like five of them say, okay, I'm going to do that, they will be the same students doing the same thing five times. So this, is, this can be a problem. So sometimes you will have teachers that are like, okay, I'm going to do this and you, can, you have to say then, okay, I'm not going to do this this year. It will be next year because maybe your students will be the same and they will have two times the same assignment. And for them, it's quite strange why all every teacher now is asking me to write on Wikipedia. And uh, as the teachers don't know, sometimes I have had the same group like two times in two weeks with the same presentation. We was like, okay, did you stay in the last, I mean, I'm going to explain the same. So it doesn't make sense. Um, it's important to show teachers what is missing, what they can work on. PetScan is very friendly for this, like finding things that you can work on like in your department because, I mean, for how long is the same? Uh, okay, overall in biology, I need these articles, but maybe they are only teaching advanced genetics, so I don't know what is missing there. So PetScan is a very useful tool for this. Uh, you have to show after what they have done. Dashboard is very useful for this, like showing, okay, this is what you have done here. These are your metrics. And if you are going to repeat, again, test, improve, test, improve, uh, you will have the same teacher like every year if you if you make some improvements. For, our, for us, it's working. They are happy. Uh, and it is also interesting to ask people who they know. Uh, normally, from my experience, it may be different in other places in the world, but from my experience, teachers don't talk between each other. It's like, okay, I can explain to this one, but the other teacher next door w won't know I have been t talking to them. So if you need something, okay, I need something in genetics. Okay, who is the teacher here 
that could help me. And normally they will say, okay, you, you should talk to this, but you shouldn't talk to this other because, I mean, uh, he or she doesn't like computers or something like that. I mean, you, you have to ask them. One thing we have been doing also is improve communications. Um, we have used social media to improve Wikipedia's reputation, uh, mostly in Twitter, now in Mastodon. Um, so you can people, you can show people what you have done, what is missing, try to engage them like, okay, we, we are doing this, but we, have, we need more people in history or we need more people. And sometimes, sometimes you have someone answering. Normally you don't have no one answering, but reputation improves. It's like, okay, I have heard about this. Maybe it's interesting. I'm, from our experience, teachers don't want to feel alone. It's like, okay, I'm not the only one doing this. There are other people doing this. And after that, they talk about my school or my high school or my university or whatever. And sometimes, Let's imagine that it's the, I don't know, uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Day. So you say, okay, this is today's Breast Cancer Awareness Day and we have a great article about breast cancer that was done by students in this university with this teacher. So these kind of things are relevant to them. Um, mention the institutions you're working with and so the results. I mean, if you're working with, an, with a university, mention them every time you are uh, showing results. And um, be active to interaction. If people interact with you, you should interact with them. I think this is it's quite not related to education, but it's related on how you engage more people. Okay, we have done Wikipedia, that is a children encyclopedia. This is quite unique in our movement. Um, currently, it has more than 6,000 articles. At first, when we started, it was like, okay, we are going to write for children, but it's, it's not. It's not like that. It's children writing for them. So most of them is written by students themselves. Like 80% of the articles have been written by the students. Secondary and primary education students. Some of them seven years old. Um, what gives us to the last point, it should be more flexible than Wikipedia because they write very poorly. I mean, they don't know how to write. I could say that I know how to write after finishing university. I mean, it's not it's not easy to write. So students will write something. They are seven years old. They don't. They won't write. They will write something that is doesn't make all the sense. Or we have errors, typographic or otherwise, or conceptual. So our work there is more involving education, involving educators, and also future teachers to work on that to show the values of publishing. And it's not so much about having a really reliable children encyclopedia. It's more about the process itself of writing it. Mm, there may be people saying that, okay, yes, but it should be reliable. And I agree, but this is something we have to involve teachers and not the students. I mean, teachers are responsible for what their students are publishing to you, especially when they are primary education students. If someone wants to know more about this, I very happy to explain. Okay, improving help pages. Um, this is something we didn't make all the... Um, we didn't make when we started. We made some brochures and just let's improve, but we, we saw that it's really important. Students aren't going to read the manual. No one reads the manual, but having the manual there is important because it's okay, if you need help, it's here. They are not going to read it, but teachers are also more confident because, okay, there is a manual. So we made, we, we made help pages adapted for students and newcomers. There is a big button like uh, in education portal in, in, our, in our Wikipedia. We also created the special help pages for teachers, like what to expect, how to deal with the students, normal problems like uh, you can create more than six accounts per IP, how to solve that, uh, what should you do if you read your school has been blocked, <laughs> these kind of things. I mean, things for for teachers. And documenting what to do with the students. And also we created a forum, but they are not using it. But there is a, if you want, you can ask like, okay, I want to do this and, and, and I need help. Um, and we went multimedia. Uh, this is something that we didn't expect, but uh, a pandemic 
came, so we couldn't go to classrooms. So what we did is to record the normal classroom, the normal speech we make. Uh, we made like uh, the the no the normal will be like one hour, so it's like six videos of ten minutes with topics like how what is Wikipedia, how to create this, how to navigate, uh, what's the visual editor, and these kind of things. So we started. It was like a pandemic event. We need something now, but now there are many teachers that don't ask anymore to go to their classroom because they have it multimedia and they know that their students prefer to see a video than to hear to me. Okay, even if the video. It's not me, it's my colleague, but they prefer to see the video at home that going go in there. And also help via communication channels. We, we answer a lot of questions via uh, direct messages in Twitter, for example, like teachers that are working and, and they want to do that. And we also ask, we also answer questions by email, like our personal emails that they write to students. Normally students write that uh, things like, it's not working. You have to figure out what is not working and talk to them. But uh, it's quite important to, for them to have like a, who to write if you are, if they are going to. Eventually, they will have a problem because they weren't aware in classroom and they didn't see the help pages or the videos. So they are going to ask something like, "How do I publish?" Okay. Um, Kit is sample. Kit it simple, stupid, or keep it super simple, super simple. Um, students are not going to learn all our infrastructure in one hour. It's impossible. I mean, it's, it's not something that we can even try. You, you can learn or uh, how, how to build a template or what, what is a good categorization or some kind of things that are you need months to, to start learning that. So we adopted automatic templates. So they, ha they don't have to fill templates anymore. And we avoid explaining to not interested students. Some, sometimes the students say, I want to make this. Then I go to them and I explain them how to make a template, how they work, uh, what you should translate, everything. Um, we don't, for, for example, we don't explain about categorization. It's something that only Wikipedians care. I mean, it's not something for them. Uh, we also have work in automatic translation tools. We, we have worked with Eluya, that is a foundation working on technology. So now translating into Basque is quite a straightforward. Not perfect, but uh, it's easier for them. And also, we ask for feasible things. We, we don't ask them like, okay, you are going to write like a feature article for tomorrow. It's, it's not possible. Uh, it's like, okay, let's think what is possible. Um, and when we have started to work with translation tools, one thing that teachers have said us is like, the articles are long, larger and longer than before because it's easier to translate. So now we ask students not to be too long because that makes lot of work for work for the teachers later to correct okay so it's like okay keep it simpler don't don't be the be too long okay adding multimedia this is something that is new we are working on our main project is it's, it's uh, i can't i can't show the the link but okay it's there uh, this is a pro a multimedia project that we are working on is pedagogical videos. We have another grant from the Basque government to do this, to implement this. And what we are doing is during the course, like uh, 40 weeks of the year that they are elective, we are publishing one video every week on different topics. There are high, high quality videos um, done with, um, with university professors for the script and um, professional video makers, like uh, some some of them are in YouTuber format, like with an actor or an actress working on that. Uh, some of them are animations. Everything is on Commons. Everything is free, and everything is translatable. You can subtitle or you can dub the videos. So most of the videos can be adapted to other languages. Actually, some of the videos has been dubbed to Catalan also, and. We have uh, me, most of the videos are also subtitled in Spanish or English, so they can be used elsewhere. Um, 
and we are thinking out of the box here. We have the, the videos in Wikipedia articles, of course, they are on commons, but we are also introducing them in YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, where we publish also the facts, like where does this information come from, what, which relevant articles you have in Wikipedia, which are the reference. And also we have a project that is called Learn with Ocho, Ocho is Wolf, Wolfy, and it's a project, a multimedia project for children that are actual comic um, stripes, like one-page comics, on different scientific topics. And we publish every comic in Basque, as, and also without text, so they can be reused. If anyone wants in, in another language, you can reuse the comics. And um, this was like a side project, but it's actually quite uh, interesting because uh, there are a lot of uh, teachers asking for more comics on this because they are useful for them. And um, fun with glams. Okay. We have worked with glams, which are outside of our scope, but always adding them inside our education goals. We have worked with, for example, a museum called Sonio Enea, that is a traditional musical instruments museum to add videos and images and sounds of uh, music, like popular music. We have worked with the Summer University. We published a lot of books. And so to have these books for free also, in so we can add text there. They're for free and with free license. We have worked with them on a digital humanities grant. We uh, have given, given us some projects, like a Martista, that is a project for uh, women artists. And Bedi Girada, this is a project to teach philosophy to students with current affairs, like all philosophy with current affairs. Uh, all of this is included in Wikipedia articles. With a museum, this is Urma El Blitz, it's a project to document um, a species that lives near near uh, tough poles like frogs and insects with children and we have also worked with some newspapers to add uh, free content like images historical images and some things that they are in archives so we can illustrate better current affair articles and recent history articles with their with their images so these are side projects but uh, they are also funded with the with the first government funding so that's why they're included here so we have seven minutes left if you want something to be explained more there are links in the presentation which is in commons but if you want to something to be explained i'm really happy to do that also after Okay, you are doing an excellent work. Um, two thoughts about, two, two reflections. One is that you mentioned that the students that create this uh, Chiqui Pedia, Chiqui Le Chicos, um, they write not always very good and they are not, um, the production is not that um, of that quality, but uh, they learn to write actually and i'm teaching at the university and what i found is that um i try to teach paleontology with wikipedia but in the end um the, the main thing i'm doing is uh teaching how to write um, so they learn to write they learn to write um, something which is very similar to a scientific article um they need to follow rules they need to add citations and yeah, and write with uh, kind of language that is adequate for an encyclopedia. So it is more or less the same, but uh, at different levels. And finally, um, you create all this infrastructure that, is, that fits your, your, your needs. And I wonder if uh, there are many uh, projects like mine, we are creating a not, not so well-organized infrastructure, but we, we do also similar, that we are um, doing the same and we could I mean, uh, have some resources that we can share. I don't know how, but not working many times, doing many times the same. I don't know if it's useful because perhaps every project have different needs and it's better to, I, I, I'm asking you what, what, would you, what do you think about it? Okay, for the first thing, yes, actually, 
actually I have uh, discovered that going to university is l l about learning how to write. It's not about learning. I also studied paleontology, so it's, it's not about paleontology. You learn how to read articles and how to write. For students, it's the same. Uh, we have some kids for eight years old. They had to write about their town, and they had to decide if talking about the model of car that the mayor has was relevant for an article or not. I mean, should we write that the mayor has a blue car, Volkswagen, this kind? And it's something that is very interesting for them to decide, like, is it relevant or not? Should we talk about that or not? Why? And they were 80 years old, and it was quite interesting. So yes, it's actually, that is important. For the other part, well, everything can be copied in Wikipedia. I mean, we also copy codes from Meta or whatever. So yes, some of the things can be directly copied, like the portals or these kind of things. But for example, going back, we translated a lot of things from Argentina's education project. So uh, I mean, yes, every, everything is copied, everything is a remix. But yes, the infrastructure can, some of the th ideas in the infrastructure can be copied and some of the projects can be copied. And we try to make everything translatable. It's actually that you have to translate from Basque because it's not a very known language. So that's, that's the most difficult part. But if, if there is something that uh, we can help, of course, we can, we can help with that. Thank you. Um, I'm Asaf from the Wikimedia Foundation. I wanted to say that, <clears throat> <I've, coughs> excuse me, I've been following it admiring your work at the Basque community. I think you have both a passion, um, a great passion for your work and also very innovative uh, ideas, even as you also remix uh, things from that, that already exist. I want to call out that you can be a model, your work can be a model for other communities that are small to medium uh, communities. Um, and specifically wanted to congratulate you, and this ties with your question, about being kind of a good wiki citizen uh, for example, the comics that you mentioned, you also created an empty version, you know, without the text so that others could easily put text into it. It doesn't take long if you've already created the comic to just also create an empty version. That's the kind of practice that you can do when you produce materials to make it a little more likely that it gets reused, right? Not that it's difficult to remove the original text with graphic editing, etc. But, you know, if you already offered it, you're basically inviting people to reuse it. And it, it, it goes a long way. Um, <clears throat> and I wanted to add my own question also about Wikipedia. Uh, I understand the importance of teaching the process, teaching kids, as you just said, right? Uh, why is it relevant? What, what are, you know, uh, wh whereas the quality of the final content does, doesn't terribly matter. So it, it's almost like a write only encyclopedia. Uh, I mean, I'm assuming not a lot of people actually, not a lot of kids actually go to it to, to learn uh, the, the substance, the material. And if so, do you actually reset the contents or like, you know, say, hey, uh, kids would enjoy writing a new article about dinosaurs rather than expanding the existing one? Okay. Uh, it's not a read-only encyclopedia. Uh, children are reading it. We have lots of visits. I mean, uh, surprisingly, had visits. I don't have the, the statistics now, but uh, they are quite busy. We also have an app, which is not very used, but uh, it could be used to only search, search inside Wikipedia. One interesting thing we have found is that there is more adult people reading Wikipedia than k kids. One, because the articles are shorter, so it's easier to find. Like secondary students are very lazy, so okay, I'm going to read the short version. Uh, one thing is that. And the other thing that is quite interesting is that um, many people who, I mean, it's my case, I studied in Basque, but my parents were not, my, my father doesn't know Basque, and my mother is not uh, alphabetized in Basque. So a lot of kids have this problem. So for their parents, it's quite an interesting resource because you can, I mean, it's not very difficult to read and you can reuse it. So we also have parents reading it. Uh, we have children reading it because I know when I go to, sometimes I go to schools and I ask them, do you know Wikipedia? And the answer normally is yes. So I think they are reading. And the most read articles about solar system and circulatory system, so there are articles that definitively are for them. So it's not read only, but what most students are writing are more biographies and local things that are not very read, but the global things like scientific topics 
uh, we are covering them with uh, future teachers like in in the university who are writing for like for their future students so these are well better writing articles and we also are working on a rubric with uh, university teachers to evaluate what their students are doing for future generations so it's not totally read only but we have found that write only is also one of the great things uh, it has we are out of time actually but i think that now is uh, now it's lunch break so we can <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, thanks for the presentation yeah I, i'm uh, generally very interested in development of smaller communities and i'm very curious because yeah in bigger projects when it comes with uh, collaboration with universities and teachers uh, yeah you can go to one university and get no feedback there but you you think ah oh, yeah i can i will go to the next university or like in the next town and or like across the road and to ask them for example but in such smaller community i think it's limited resources so how do you feel uh, how do you um, develop in this condition is it challenging okay so this is a bit of sociolinguistics basque uh, speakers we are around a million uh, people who learns in basque is around 700,000 uh, but we have education in basque i mean all the education system is in basque you can uh, uh, learn in basque and university most of the things can be learned whether in basque or in spanish not everything so it's actually a good entry point to go for teachers who are teaching in Basque to ask them to make something that doesn't exist in the internet. Like if you are working in a major language like English or Spanish or French, it's like, okay, there will be anyone doing that. But in Basque is, or you are doing it or no one is going to do that because you are the, I don't know, the chemistry teacher. I mean, <laughs> there is no other one teaching organic chemistry too, it's you. So <laughs> if you are not doing this, it's not going to happen and you, we need that so this approach is quite good on the other side we have like uh, the bus public university has like uh, 16,000 students and some other universities total it will be like 25 30,000 students learning in basque so it's quite possible to have mostly in every topic someone working not in everyone i mean for example there are not expert in middle ages some kind of things but you, you can have someone to write on and well the fact is that we have been working with uh, in, in the universities we have in five years we have had six thousand students and 2050 teachers involved so yes it's possible but uh, it requires knocking every door <laughs> To convince someone else and not every every not every door will have a positive answer so that's why <laughs>